All right, so in chapter 13, we're going to take a look at solutions. First of all, a little bit of background. Back in chapter 10, we looked at gases. In 11, we looked at liquids. And in chapter 12, we looked at solids. But we looked at them kind of separately. But uh, now what we're going to do is take a look at what matter really is like in the world, and that's that it's all mixed up. And many, many times it forms what's called a solution, which is known as a homogeneous mixture. So the solution process happens when uh, one or more substances disperses uniformly throughout the other to make a homogeneous mixture. And this happens to be on page 530 of your textbook. So mixing has a natural tendency. If you take oxygen gas and argon gas and separate them by a barrier and you remove the barrier, well, the oxygen and the argon gas are just going to start to mix. And they're going to try to be, be, be uh, not as arranged or ordered anymore. This increase in mixed upness of things causes an increase in a thermodynamic quantity called entropy. And entropy is the mixed upness or disorganization or the more possible microstates that matter can be in. And of course, uh, in my example, I had oxygen and argon. You know, there would be more uh, ways of having oxygen and argon be in a certain space if you put them together than if you had them separate from one another. And so this mixing is just a natural thing that happens already. And this uh, tendency towards disorganization or mixed up in this room or microstates is the driver of much of this to start with. So intermolecular forces operate between solutes and solvents. And solute, of course, is the substance that's being dissolved. Solvent is the substance that is usually present in larger quantity and does the dissolving. Think of salt and water. Well, uh, the, the water is usually the solvent, and the solute would be the salt. Uh, argon and oxygen mixing in this picture right here, I don't know which one is the solute and which one is the solvent. It's probably interchangeable. You could define it whichever way you want, but one is dissolved inside of the other. These intermolecular forces also work between solutes and solvents, not just between the atoms, molecules, ions, or particles that make up the solvent or the solute. For example, if heptane and pentane mix together in a solution, you'd see that dispersion forces hold those two together. If we had uh, acetone and chloroform mixing together, you'd see that they both have a dipole moment, and therefore they would attract to one another. And so dipole-dipole forces would help hold those two solute and solvents together. Ethanol and water, two substances that both have hydrogen bonding. And if you mix those two together, the hydrogen bonds would help hold those together, in addition to the dispersion forces as well. Uh, if we take sodium chloride and dissolve it in water, well, then we have uh, ion dipole forces that are helping hold the ions together and be surrounded by the water. Well, there are three kinds of intermolecular interactions that are involved in solution formation. And these interactions uh, are listed on the notes right here that end up giving us the energetics or the energy that's associated with forming of a solution. So component number one, is that the solute-solute interactions have to be broken. So they have to separate from one another. So think of it as, as our salt and water example. You have to take the water molecules and separate those apart. And so that's going to take some energy that you have to put in to separate the hydrogen bonds holding one water molecule to one water molecule. The second thing is that the solvent-solvent has to be broken up. And so in our example of sodium chloride and water, once again, uh, the Na and the Cl would have to be broken apart. And actually, I think I put those two in opposite places right here. The solute, solute would be the Na and the Cl breaking apart. The solvent and the solvent would be the H2O and the H2O breaking apart. Here, regardless, both of those two have to happen at the same time. And of course, uh, as we indicated before, you might have to define which one's the solvent and the solute. But in my case, uh, the sodium chloride would be the solute, and then the water would be the solvent, both requiring energy to separate those two substances. Then once you've got that amount of energy, uh, 
that put in to separate the NaCLs, to separate the water molecules from one another, then you'd have to have an attraction between those two things. And so you have to have an energetics of mixing. And so in this case, this is the chloride ion. It, of course, would mix really well with the hydrogen atoms off of the water molecules. And then here is the sodium ion, and that would be positive, and that would be attracted to the uh, oxygen portions of the water molecule as well. These all add together to give us an energetics of the solution formation. So the separation of the solute, the separation of the solvent, and the energetics of the mixing all have to come together, and that gives us the enthalpy of making a particular solution. So just two real life examples of this. So you've probably all seen these before. Instant hot packs where you like uh, open them up from a baggie or maybe they're the, 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 the liquid ones are actually the one that this applies to. Uh, you take and you squish them and then they um, form a, a, like a little more solid type gel and then they feel warm in your hand. Well, these usually contain magnesium sulfate that's separated from water and then when you squish them or break them, then those two things mix and then you get the uh, solute separated from one another. The solvents break apart from H2O's to H2O's and then they go around the magnesium ion and the sulfate ion and they release energy. And so here's an instant hot pack that's undergone those three parts and then it's released some energy in the overall process getting warmer. Uh, a second example, an instant cold pack. So one form of instant cold pack uses ammonium nitrate and then you take that salad and you put it into water. It's probably like in a little baggie and the little baggie is surrounded maybe by some water. And then when you break the little baggie, then it's uh, water undergoes um, the solvent solvent separation and H4NO3 separates. These are surrounded by waters. These are surrounded by waters. And then it takes energy into the system. So it feels cold to the surroundings. And so therefore there's your instant cold pack. All both of these, both of these undergo the same energetics of solution where there's a separation of solute, a separation of solvent, and then there's an energy of mixing. And if they do that, there might be energy given off or there might be energy taken in. That's an intro to the start of solutions.